पुण्यपात्रम मध पूर्ण तथा Who could have imagined that a young lad born in a remote village in Kerala in the deep south of India would one day help to bring harmony to the world Swami Vishnu Devananda founded the True World Order and the Shivananda Yoga Vedanta centers and ashrams Hundreds of thousands of people from practically every country on the globe have been transformed by Shivananda Yoga Vedanta centers and ashrams. 14,000 students are trained every week. A new vision of life is brought to them. which shows them the peace and beauty which lies within each of them it brings to them a vision in which there is a profound unity between all human beings of the world the animals the birds the flowers the trees all that there is separation and barriers between people are man-made these can be transcended by a vision of unity and the acceptance of all our differences swami ji using danishan teachings of yoga explained that the strife of humanity the many wars the many struggles the suffering is due to the fact that people are seeing each other as different and they are fighting about the differences Swami Vishnu Devananda wanted to draw people's attention to the fact that boundaries and barriers are only man-made that they can be overcome He created a one world citizenship passport Swami ji used to fly with this as his only passport. With this, he was able to visit every country. He risked his life to fly across the Suez Canal. In those days when all aircraft used to be shot down if they tried to do that. During the Cold War, he flew over the Berlin Wall. Many thought that this was a suicide mission. By flying with flowers instead of bombs, he showed that boundaries are only man-made. Swami Vishnu Devananda visited Ireland, Israel, Punjab, and other troubled places to spread the message of peace miraculously he was saved swami ji said that death is running away from him he tries to is chasing death that is running away from him wherever he went people felt the power of peace that radiated from swami ji and they responded Peace, happiness and brotherhood are our birthright. War and conflict are our disgrace. we can get back to our original state of peace and love these are the thoughts of yoga master and teacher swami vishnu devananda
leaders of the world, political and religious, are leading people in the wrong direction, towards division and conflict, away from their peace and enlightenment. This is because these leaders do not know the way to peace themselves. Swami Shivananda said, you can elevate others only if you have elevated yourself. This world can be saved only by those who have already saved themselves. The individual must find peace within before we can find the peace outside. The world is just like a cloth I am wearing. This cloth is made up of cotton and each thread is cotton thread. So by using that cotton thread, it became a cotton cloth. If I want to change this cloth into silk, then every thread must be changed. Then only I'll have silk cloth. So cloth is nothing but the thread. So the universe is nothing but the individuals like you and me. Really the real goal of yoga is world peace. A prisoner cannot liberate other prisoners. A selfless leader can be anyone that has gained control over his or her mind and body. It is really to relax your nervous system, to rejuvenate the nervous system so that your mind can calm down and focus. Because the whole of life really is to learn how to focus. If you can focus, you can see who you are, and if you see who you are, you find the keys to happiness. This will allow them to gain true knowledge and a vision of unity. Self-transformation is not just an individual personal improvement. It is in fact a way to world peace. Yogic discipline provides the tools for self-transformation and world transformation. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. What Swami Shivananda and Swami Vishnu Devananda did was to put the ancient yoga system in a very clear format. Though it has its roots in ancient scriptures, everyone can see that it is something that can be practiced in today's modern life. Yoga is um, defined as union. The union is between the individual soul and the supreme soul and the yogis explained that by uh, uniting through realizing our true nature which means that actually we have never been separate from the supreme soul we find freedom we find freedom from all suffering when it mind body mind and the soul are brought together it's called yoga uh, in the earlier stage, a student has been taught the physical discipline called asanas before he can go to the mental discipline, which is very hard for a beginner. Long exhalation, long inhalation, again long exhalation, inhale, hold the breath, close your eyes, concentrate, relax the body. Straight your legs. Now right leg gently over the head. Up. Uh, change left leg. Up. Uh, 
Now both the legs over the head, the plow position. Raja Yoga says, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Yoga is controlling and subjugation of the mental modifications. Modifications are something like the waves, the, the ocean and the waves. The ocean is, the, is made up of water, but waves also made up of water. And there is no difference between ocean and the wave, but the waves are the modification of the, of the ocean. Same way, the mind is the ocean and there is modification or waves called thought waves. These thought waves disturb our peace of mind in continuous thought, various types of negative thought, positive thought, neutral thought, and they are continuously pouring into the mind. First, students are taught how to remove the negative thoughts and neutral thoughts and put with the sublime thoughts and eventually he controls all thoughts and go beyond the thought and there will, then the mind will become like a lake or an ocean without waves and he finds tranquility. Looking back at Swami Vishnu Devananda's life, I see a master who spent literally several decades of his life with the people. He brought yoga directly to the people. The amount of traveling that he did over several continents was coming from that urge to bring yoga to the people. His master had told him, go to the West, people are waiting. And he took it literally. He tried to find as many people as possible who could be those people who were waiting. Never stopped him. His favorite expression when we were flying was, never mind, I tell him something couldn't be done, it was impossible, it wasn't allowed, he'd say, never mind, we're doing it. He was really unstoppable and tireless in his efforts. Swami Vishnu Devananda would say, you are as free as a bird, you can fly anywhere if you allow it, <laughs> if you cross your inner borderline. I guess maybe what I got from my association with Swamiji is, I can't think of a better word than faith. This organization got built on a prayer and a dream. And I think that's testament to what a remarkable person he was. I have to say this, the, the most inspirational thing that I got from Swami Vishnu was his devotion to his master. It was palpable. It was so real. And it just spoke to me so deeply. And because of that, it was like I know, I knew his master too, and that it's like having that feeling of connection with the divine, with God. My encounter with master is in, when I was very in my teens, 17, when I was in the army, I came to know him through a literature, and I saw him first time, I knew he is not just an ordinary human being or ordinary gurus. He is not even a guru, he never considered himself a guru, but he is completely a childlike, a person like childlike nature, but full of wisdom, full of strength. And when he smiles, his whole body will smile. Always continuously there is an emanation of energy from his body and his eyes. I believe Swami Shivananda and Swami Vishnu Devananda taught that um, yoga begins with one person, with each person. And it's only through reaching individuals and teaching each person the true understanding of life, the true meaning of life, that we will change this planet. It's little by little. It's not going to happen all of a sudden. Serve, love, give, purify, meditate, realize. Be good, do good, be kind, be compassionate. Adapt, adjust, accommodate. Bear insult, bear injury, highest sadhana. Swami Vishnu Devananda and Swami Shivananda taught um, what they called inner peace for outer peace. Uh, the meaning is that uh, the only way we are going to generate peace around us is by us directly experiencing peace within ourselves. Swami Vishnu Devananda began teachers training courses in yoga. Today, 
the Shivananda organization has already trained 37,000 teachers. Yoga is taught by them in nine ashrams in 30 centers across the globe. And what's happened in the Western world is that we have been very good at pursuing the outer, material, media-based world, uh, but we have lost our connections to a great extent with the inner world of consciousness and direct perception. So the great yogis realized that the yoga could be a great gift to the West. The Shivananda organization uh, of Swami Vishnu Devananda is one of the best, if not the best, as far as my opinion goes, yoga groups in the world, particularly in the Western world, because they teach the classical and integral tradition of yoga, including Hatha Yoga, Raja Yoga, Vedanta, and even the importance of devotion, rituals, Ayurveda, even the Jyotish or the Vedic astrology. They provide also a teaching in an ashram karma yoga setting where there's the emphasis on selflessness and inner giving, yoga as a sadhana, not simply yoga as an exercise or yoga as a business. So in yoga, there is a four path of yoga. There is the karma yoga, the selfless service. There is the bhakti yoga, which is a selfless love. And there is the raja yoga, which is the control of mind and senses and energy, leading to meditation. And um, there is the jnana yoga, which is the self-inquiry, removing the illusion and retaining the truth. Swami Shivananda is one of those giants of yogic history who had a big impact on, a, on the West, even though he never came here. He was a physician by training, and he's been called a master of masters because his emissaries, his disciples who were sent out to other parts of the world had a big impact. And the first to come to America was Swami Vishnu Devananda in 1957. As he was teaching and setting up centers and so forth, uh, uh, he found a, a, a welcome and um, enthusiastic audience. And then his book, which was published in 1960, was probably the first best-selling book on yoga, the complete illustrated book on yoga. Swami Vishnu met the Beatles and gave them each a signed copy of uh, the complete illustrated book of yoga. And subsequently, uh, George especially and John would say that that was their introduction to India and its spiritual heritage. One of Swami Vishnu's great contributions was that he was among the first, if not the, the first, of the uh, gurus who came here from India to uh, start training in a systematic way uh, Westerners 
to teach yoga. And so he started something that would become a cultural phenomenon, the uh, advent of well-trained Western people, Americans and Europeans, who are teaching classical yoga in a reliable and traditional way. Which is the best book on asanas? If you read that book, then you know everything about asanas. I can recommend one book. It's been out for a long, long time. It's being republished again and again. But there are not many people who read it. Do you still want to know? The book is called Human Body. That's the book. That's the book. Everything is written about asanas in your own body. You just have to spread it out on the asana mat and start doing it. And then it tells you the story. I've seen people really undergo um, remarkable changes and make uh, remarkable discoveries mm, through, their, through their yoga practice. And to the extent that you know, often they've been able to let go of the uh, medication, different things that, that they were relying on before. But very often it's a real revelation to people that they really do actually have control and choice. Swami Shivananda and Swami Vishnadevananda taught us to do, you know, this is really the, you know, the fundament, a fundamental attitude. A little bit of it also you can give to the students you know, as an idea for their own life also. We don't see the underlying fundamental truth of the oneness of all existence. This is the root cause of our own suffering and this is the root cause of the suffering of everyone else. If this root cause of suffering could be removed, the products of this root cause, the products of ignorance could also be removed. Therefore, the yogic path is to remove the root cause, which is ignorance, by applying the different methods and disciplines of yoga. Fear comes from not identifying with our own self, not knowing our true nature, not knowing the true nature of each other. When we break down those barriers, we see that we are all one in this world. And that was Swami Vishnu Devananda's main teaching. His goal in teaching yoga and in starting these ashrams and these centers, in training 37,000 teachers over the years, was to send people out in the world that could bring that message. Something is sounding within me that says this is the real thing. On a very simple level, when I took my TTC, for instance, um, all I could say was every day I felt more positive. That was enough to say I want to continue to feel more positive, to feel that sort of authentic happiness or that, that knowledge that there's something greater out there. And it's not just, you know, the negativity that we see in the world. That's not the reality. We don't even really take time to consider our own human body as sacred. And we definitely don't recognize that the planet, the earth and the oceans and the rest of creation is also sacred. Swami Shivananda said, that all is one. The world is one home. All are members of one human family. 
all creation is an organic whole no man is independent from that whole separation is death unity is eternal life cultivate cosmic love include all protect animals let all life be sacred smile with the flowers and the green grass play with the butterflies birds and the running brooks and the waves of the sea develop friendship with your neighbors dogs cats cows human beings trees flowers you will realize oneness or unity of life the purpose of this congress is to first of all bring all the yoga leaders spiritual leaders political leaders leaders in the fields of arts and crafts together to form a common platform and the common platform is yoga or yogic discipline that is what the TWO is meant for TWO means true world order is to bring unity in diversity we cannot have one type of religious leader for all the humanity or one type of political leader or any other form of leaders yet if we accept that unity can be found in the diversity there will be peace in this world for the TWO uses the technique or science of yoga for self mastery and self discipline Swami Vishnu Devananda come and share a life and share a way of life not defined by one ideology or another ideology but suggesting to people that they can find happiness within that they can find calm within that through the stabilization of the mind the world can be made a wonderful place that this interiority was a message very very much needed Before I came to the yoga farm, I was very angry and uh, unhappy about my station in life and I did not treat myself or others well. Coming to the yoga farm has been an extremely rewarding experience because I've learned a philosophy or I've started to learn a philosophy about life which gives me hope. What I've taken away from the yoga farm is that I can be of service to other people, I can be of service to the community. and i'm not so concerned about my memories or my past experiences i'm more concerned about how i can help people and how i can be involved very much a way of life a whole lifestyle that helps you helps you keep it your inner joy and bring out your best qualities and and learn that the mind is not who you are that's the best thing <laughs> that we take away from the shivananda system you are not your body you are not your mind you are the immortal self shukanjame shainanjame shushajame sudinanjame swaha the practice of hatha yoga is mainly to learn how to stimulate that flow of energy If that happens you feel immediately better hmm? because when the energy flows the mind becomes positive For me it's a spiritual journey I've come here to find the answer and I spend a fair amount of time on my own personal practices and a lot of mental turmoil and therefore yoga becomes even more significant in the days to come so i'm only seeing that uh, this is truly going to be not just an export of india it's going to be a worldwide process seen as something which is essential for good living that's a good thing that's a good thing for us and we are contributing a lot
So far, the Shivananda Yoga Vedanta centers have, I think, trained around 35,000 trainers across the world. It's a lot of trainers from 1969 to now. And uh, they are affecting millions of people in their own way in almost all the countries across the world. I think the strength of this organization is that it, it focuses on basic lifestyle practices. It empowers people right from the ground upwards. I came into this organization about four years after Swami Vishnu Levananda left his body. So I never had any direct contact with him. But at the same time, I feel very connected to him and I feel his presence is with me all the time. And I feel his presence in my everyday situations and the way things happen around me, I feel very much under his guidance and uh, energy. Prana is a life force. It's the most important teaching of yoga is how to uh, increase our life force and uh, how to balance and how to use our life force properly, how not to spend and to realize that the prana or the life force is the divine. It's our connection with uh, the universe, it's our connection with the divine. And uh, God has given us this life force for a reason, and we have to use it um, properly. There is a vibrancy that comes with prana. So it is said that people are attracted to each other, or somebody is attracted to a teacher or to words of a, a speaker because the amount of prana that is being sent. So I mean, Vishnu Devanji, whatever he say, create a strong impact in our mind because he has so much prana that whatever he say or even a glance uh, of his look, you know, or his presence uh, is a supercharged with prana. So it is said that he's a divine personality like that. I mean, you feel elevated in his company just by the mere presence of his prana. 800 million people in the world are practicing yoga. 800 million people, this is a very large number, and the statistics that we are getting are saying that the numbers continue to grow. It is believed that in the next 10 years, one and a half billion people around the world are going to practice yoga. This is going to create a tremendous change in the planet. So what we are seeing, we are seeing a revolution of consciousness. The consciousness of humanity is changing and is changing for the better. We are seeing all over the world millions of people caring for each other. They are caring for people which live far away. It never happened in the history of this planet. So that consciousness revolution is taking place. It is the next revolution. The communication revolution is the present revolution, but the next revolution is the revolution of consciousness. In 1957, Swami Vishnu Devananda arrived in the USA with 10 rupees in his pocket, which is the equivalent of about 15 cents by today's exchange rates. However, he came with the rich treasure of an ancient culture. He brought to Western shores a science of life, which provides a path to peace and good health. A path which takes us to a true understanding of ourselves and our unity with all that there is around us. Yoga.
My mission was, as much as possible, to reduce the negative influence on human society by positive suggestions and a positive way of life. How's the Congress going? Oh, Congress is beautiful. Our staffs are marvelous. Everyone is working hard except Swami Vishnu who is lying in the hammock and enjoying his life. <laughs>